don't patronize. I realize I'm losing in this. We're at the Ottawa Blues Fest with Marianne's friend. So, what do you guys like best about being in Canada's capital, Ottawa? Yeah, Ian. Heat. Hot, muggy, sweaty heat. <laughs> I like feeling like I'm breathing through a towel. That's my favorite. <laughs> I also like that the Parliament buildings look like they may be like the gateway to like the land of Narnia or some sort of they magical. You mean might be? Because I'm always searching. <laughs> so first of all, we we want to congratulate you guys. You guys just released "Cross My Heart" to the U.S. a few days ago. Oh yeah, yeah, right. Uh, do, are we gonna expect a tour in the states sometime soon? Yep, probably. We hope, we hope so. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, we will. Yeah, of course. Yeah. This year, do you think? Or? Uh, yeah. Yeah, it'll be this year. I don't know exactly when yet. We're figuring out who. Like, you know, it's funny because we got to go. Uh, it, it's kind of like we we got to sort of start all over again, right? You know, so sort of like we got to go back to looking for like a good a good opening slot and stuff, which we haven't done for years. I'm, I'm actually kind of looking forward to. It's gonna be fun. The energy of of competing with a headline band again. That'll be fun. Yes. Like, not in a negative way, but like a healthy competition kind of way. I think that'll actually be fun. We're the underdog. Yeah, we go back to being the I underdogs. Always, I love being the underdog. We're better as underdogs, anyway. Yeah, mm -hmm. not overdog. No. Yeah. Okay, so, um, your current album has a really cool theme to it. So, how did you come up with that idea of, like, the musical kind of thing? Like, oh, like having them all linked together and stuff? Yeah. Um... <clears throat> You know, I just didn't have enough ideas for melodies, so I had to just keep reusing them in other <laughs> songs. Uh, and then... <laughs> <coughs> Run out of drum parts, just keep reusing stuff. Just keep reusing stuff. Um, I don't know, I think I... I kind of wanted to do that on the first album, but I just wasn't really ready yet. Like, you know, writing-wise, I don't think I was ready yet. At one point, we did we did record some stuff on the first album that would be themes that would all link together, and then eventually we only used one of them, which turned into the acapella intro for Shake Tramp, which was remember there were originally yeah. like four versions of that that went in different spots in the album. Yeah, remember that? Uh, but the rest of them weren't that cool, <laughs> so we just used the good one. We kept the one that worked the best. And then on the second record, like, I, I actually made a decision to do that beforehand. But uh, And now I'm trying something even more ridiculous on the third album, but I can't talk about it yet. But it's ambitious and stupid and crazy, so we'll if see. If you pull it off, it'll be great. If I pull it off. Oh, I don't know yet. I don't know yet. Eventually, lesson. It'll come out. Um, probably early next year, I would guess. Hopefully. Probably like, yeah, I, pro I would guess, but who, hard to say, hard to say. Awesome. Um, on Masterpiece Theater, you had a few guests who contributed, like some of Josh's family and a former band member, Steve Marshall. What was it like to work with all those people? Steve, I forgot Steve was on that. I love Steve. <laughs> wow, nice. See, that was a coincidence that Steve was on that. Like, we just needed to do some gang vocal. I think that was Acadia that he sent on, right? Yep. Um, and we needed some gang vocals to do that whoa, whoa thing. And we didn't have enough people there to sing, and Steve happened to have dropped by right then. So he, it was him and me and Matt that did that part, I think. If, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Your dad, was he on? No, he was on oh. Masterpiece 3. Yeah, my parents and my sister sang on Masterpiece 3 in that big ending section. Um, which was fun. They came in, they actually came in while we were mixing the song and did it. Like, it was the most last second it could have been. Um, but I don't know, I like to, you know, I thought it was, it was fun for me to try and involve my family a little bit, uh, cause they're all great musicians and, um, that was, that was a fun thing to be able to actually have a moment where it was like all the members of my family were singing something together. That was kind of fun. That's cool. We saw the thing with the Ramsey family singers. My sister. <laughs> my stupid sister. <laughs> We heard you singing when you're like eight. Oh, like great. Eight. No, that's great. He was very angelic. <laughs> that's great. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, you come from a very musical family, but how did the rest of you guys get into music? Like, uh... well, I come from a very unmusical family, which is why I play drums. Yeah. <laughs> Ian wanted to. Ian wanted to pick something that didn't have any notes. No notes. Josh, you and Matt have been best friends since high school, right? Well, friends? Well, we work together. Did you? Did you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Sorry. Are you guys friends already, or nope. did you like become friends? <laughs> we, used all, we used to all be friends, and now we just work. Together. Now we just work together. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So say we talked to the people who knew you growing up and stuff. What would they say about you? And then where do you see you yourself in five to ten years? Um. They would be like that guy, a dick. 
probably. <laughs> I'm pretty crazy when you were here. I was really crazy. It depends what age you're talking about. Um, if it was like early high school, it would be like that, that guy, that the ADD kid, because I was like super. I had a lot of hyper problems and not paying attention problems. And then later in high school, those turned into drug problems. So those people wouldn't look back at me very fondly, I'm sure. Um, I can see people thinking that you'd be very or very successful or close to successful, but also close to dead. Or a complete failure. <laughs> <laughs> and the jury's still out on which it's going to become. So, where would you see yourself like in five or ten years, musically or like? <laughs> I don't know. I think we got a good shot at being successful musically, like internationally. Mm -hmm. I think we got a shot, anyways. Okay, okay. so uh, we got fans to send in some questions. Uh, what has been your worst and your best concert experience? Embassy's got to be the worst. Embassy's the worst. Embassy is the worst. We played in Ottawa, or not Ottawa, London. London. We had London. to drive from Ottawa that day. This is years ago. We like played before. for, there were zero people in the room when we were going to go oh, on. Zero. Some guy who was nice felt bad for us, went outside and said, hey, you want, or you want to well, we we'll get some of my friends to watch you guys? And we're like, ah, we didn't care. We had, <laughs> they're like five people. We had play. three vocal mics, one of which came up to here. So Mike stood singing like this. <laughs> we had no mics on any of the instruments and we got paid a hundred bucks for the show, which turned out to be 50 bucks. We got 50 bucks. Um, although, you know what's funny is that like recently uh, at a show, like in the last month, uh, some guy came up to me and said he was at that show and remembered that show and got that CD sampler we were handing out and he still had it. So that like he, he must have been one of the four people who was there. But it's funny when you're starting out, you know, because like you tour and, and you, you know, either you're opening for someone big, but you know, at some point you have to jump off of opening for other people and trying to play your own shows and bring in an audience. And generally speaking, that's like the first time, or at least in our case, the first couple times you go across the country, there's like four people at every show and you have to hope that they each, that you play well and that each of them, you know, tell someone and the next time there's eight people and it's a slow going to getting to like where we're at now, but like, you know, that was a, that was a long, that was a long road. But it's a good story. So it was the worst show, but I think you can look back on it and just laugh. Yeah, yeah. Who have you enjoyed touring with the most? Uh, I like touring with Carly a lot. She's a lot of fun. You can never be in a bad mood around Carly. No, and I'd say the new cities were great. New cities were really cool. New cities so were really, great too. We yeah. asked yeah. them about you guys. They're cool. They're, they're fun. Yeah. What was they're so own? French. Very French. They're so French. Couple <laughs> guys hardly speak English. It's great. Yeah, it's awesome. Those guys are really fun. Actually, I like those guys a lot. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what was your best concert experience? You know what? Honestly, mine is probably not like one of the big, huge shows. Like we've been doing the big shows for a couple of years now, and those aren't really like I love them and stuff. But I think my favorite was like a little show in Vancouver, and, and I think it was before our first album came out. But we finally had had one song on the radio, and it didn't even do very well. But like in Vancouver, they played it a little bit, and it was the first time we had been on stage and seen people actually like singing along the words it's to a song. Song. Yeah. It was like the first time, you know, that we saw, could see people singing along and stuff like that, and that was such a, a new weird experience. And it was sold out, I think. Like we did pack. There were like two hundred people. Packed the little club. It was probably like yeah, yeah, three hundred ish. I remember, I remember Mike actually saying like we should enjoy this because you only get to rise once or something, something kind of cheesy and yeah. yeah. Mm, Hallmark card or something like some sort of Mike, Mike is very Hallmark. He is some sort of Mike thing like that, but he was kind of right. And like that, that that was that was probably my favorite thing. Like the first time seeing people actually like sing back words and stuff like that. That was pretty cool. Mm, that'd be awesome. Um, a lot of people want to know what your tattoos mean. You also have like I think here on your arms. A lot of people are wondering. Um, this one. Um, uh, I'm a recovering heroin addict, and uh, when I was one year sober, I got that one on my shoulder. Um, and the re the reason for it is if you 
take out those dots, kind of like a one and a Y. And then if you block up the Y, it's a bass clef, which is a musical symbol. And then when I was two years sober, I got this one. And I was going to get another line for every year. And then I realized I would look like a road map. So I just stopped. <laughs> so I just stopped getting tattoos every year. Oh, cool. Do any of the rest of the members have tattoos? Just uh, Mike, actually. Mike does. Mike, Mike has a big, Mike has, it says no matter what along his this, forearm. Yeah, it's like, for him, the significance. He's got a best friend and they're kind of like no matter what you know they'll always be best friends and no matter what happens to either of them they'll always be there for the other guy oh, okay see he it's is, always, mike he is, is a cheesy hallmark, one. he is a hallmark card he is. <laughs> uh, okay, so I have a walking hallmark card he is yeah. what's your biggest fear oh biggest fear they I'd probably say, want something more philosophical than sharks i'd say us becoming or success changing us like we've kind of gone through some ups and downs but like I'd like for us to always treat each other respectfully and treat other people respectfully and hopefully if we do become quite successful I hope we don't turn into dicks God, it's like, do you ever shut up? that's all I got to say <laughs> see it's already happened I would have had to respect you in the first place oh, yeah, another thing where did the blue hair come from like you like Smurfs. Yeah. I just, I just really enjoy Smurfs and the company of Smurfs. It's really Smurf fan. It's true. He has a, ta he has a tattoo on his ass. He just wanted it. Yeah, there's a third Our tattoo you don't have. All my indecision, all of my insistence. Don't you ever tell me I'm not loving you best. And I just need a minute. I just need a breath. It's very hard to train to my continued success. Now we're doing a segment called Clearing Up the Rumors for Teens by Teens. So we're going to give you guys statements and you're going to say true or false. So a guy once tried selling Josh tickets to his own concert. True. True. And then said he, and then said he didn't want to use the tickets because Mariana's Trench were pretty gay. And I, <laughs> and I didn't tell him I was in the band. I was like, they are pretty gay. <laughs> That's true. That wasn't that long ago. That was like a, last summer. That was funny. It was like Did a year like ago. on the street? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, you all live together. Okay. False. False. Um, John Stamus from Full House worked on your album. <laughs> uh, true and false. So it was actually him from Full House? True and false. I can't confirm nor deny that one. He's it, but he's credited on both albums. Ian is giving drum lessons. Right now? Uh, or have you ever? But yeah, I have. Lights. I have for sure. Yeah. Do you teach? Who do you teach? Uh, some people around my space a little bit, but I've actually thought about teaching. Okay. Oh, and does Matt just have one shirt? Yes. True. Or one shirt. Okay. True. Period. <clears throat> it's plaid and it's brown. <laughs> Uh, Josh wants to write a play and star in it. Uh, I don't know where that one came from. Kind of, I could see you writing a musical one day. Well, yeah, well, that might be something that I'm working on, but let's just leave that. He kind of already has, technically. Yeah, kind of. That, that could be a good I'm thing working on, I am working on an idea for something like that, but I shouldn't say more about it. Okay. Okay, well that's awesome. Okay, well, thanks so much for the interview, guys. Yeah, have fun. Very, thank you. You're very welcome.